We live in a Goldilocks universe. Straying even slightly from the specifications paints an entirely different picture or even no picture at all. For more than 400 years physicists have treated the universe like a machine taking it apart to see how it ticks. The surprise it seems to have remarkably few parts just a few leptons, quarks and four fundamental forces which glue it all together. But those parts are exquisitely machined. If we tinker with their settings even slightly, the universe as we know it will cease to exist. Science now faces the question of why the universe appears to have been fine tuned to allow the appearance of complex life, a question that has some potentially uncomfortable science answers, especially for the scientists. The deeper we look into the universe, the simpler it appears to be. We know that everyday matter is built of about 100 different atoms. They in turn are composed of a dense nucleus of close packed protons and neutrons surrounded by a buzzing cloud of electrons. Peering deeper we find that the protons and neutrons themselves are made of quarks of which there are six distinct types. But two dominate the universe, the up quark and the down quark. There are also six leptons of which the electron is the most famous. fundamental forces glue matter together. Two of them, the strong and the weak, only inhabit the subatomic world. Everyday life is dominated by the electromagnetic force and gravity. We find that the masses of all the particles are very finely balanced and if they are changed even slightly the universe would not only be devoid of life but also devoid of atoms. There are many examples of this fine tuning but a good example is the ratio of the electromagnetic force constant to the gravitational force constant. It must be precisely balanced. If you increase it by only one part in 10 to the power of 40, that's 10,000 billion, 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 then only small stars will form. Decrease it by the same amount and only large stars will form. To have life there must be both large stars which produce the elements and small stars to burn long enough to sustain a planet with life. To understand something of the kind of accuracy to achieve one part in 10 to the power of 40, that's one part in 10,000 billion 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 billion. Imagine covering America with coins in a column reaching up to the moon which is 236,000 miles away and then do that the same for a billion other continents of the same size. Paint one coin red and put it somewhere in one of the billion pi billions of piles. Blindfold someone and ask them to pick it out. The odds are about one part in 10 to the power of 40 that they will. <laughs> These are just the odds of one of the fine tuning coincidences. There are many others with equally amazing odds. Indeed it seems that science has set out to find the true reason why we are alive and it is possible but conclusion is that science overwhelmingly provides evidence of a designer of the universe. Obviously though scientific method is all rigged up to ask further questions. No one is going to put money into research projects as the conclusion that God did it. So we are now explaining that our universe is one of many possible universes, potentially 10 to the power of 500, that's one followed by 500 zeros of these universes, all living together in what is known as a multiverse. Each of these individual universes was forged that their own laws of physics crystallised from a formless A's, giving unique, each unique characteristics.
Now let's run through a few of the more examples of universe's coincidences. The expansion rate of the universe. Consider the expansion rate of the Big Bang. If it was greater, so that early universes expanded faster, the matter in the universe would become so dif diffuse that gravity could never have gathered it into stars and galaxies. If it were less, then the early universe expanded more slowly, then gravity would have over overwhelmed the expansion and pulled all the matter back into a black hole. The expansion rate was just right so the universe could have stars in it, so it seems all through big all through big the universe is just right size. We can go on giving more and more examples of how the universe, our solar system and our planet seems owned to the precise states possible so that conditions exist for life to occur. And the last one I will mention is about carbon. We and the rest of life are based on carbon chemistry. The carbon that you and me was manufacturing a star prior to the formation of the universe. We are literally made out of stardust. Each carbon nucleus, composing of six protons and six neutrons, is made from three nuclei of helium within stars. Astrophysicists Oil and Solemta work together in the process of forming carbon works only because of a strange feature, a mode of vibration or resonance with a very specific energy. If it was changed by more than 1% in either way, then there would be no carbon to make life. Even Oil confessed that it looked like a super intellect had monkeyed with physics as well as with chemistry and biology and that there are no blind forces in nature worth talking about. The physicist Freeman Dyson wrote, I do not feel like an alien in the universe. The more I examine the universe and study its details of its architecture, the more evidence I find that the universe in some sense must have known we were coming. <laughs>